OpenVAS, the Open Vulnerability Assessment System, is an excellent framework that can be used to assess the vulnerabilities of our client. This application is a fork of the Nessus project. Unlike Nessus, OpenVAS offers its feeds completely free of charge. Let's start scanning. To start the services of OpenVAS, click on the application menu, then select Kali Linux, Vulnerability Analysis, and scroll down to the OpenVAS item. Before you start using OpenVAS, you need to execute the initial setup scripts first. If this is the first time you're using this application, it is going to take some time to execute the scripts. And when it finishes the first time installation, it will display the password that you are going to need to access this application. Please don't forget to save this password or you won't be able to log into the application at all. I already did this step when I executed the initial setup scripts for the first time. One more thing to do before you start the OpenVAS application. Go to the Applications menu, Kali Linux, Vulnerability Analysis, OpenVAS again. Select the OpenVAS feed update this time. Now let's close everything and open the browser. You must precede the address of your server with HTTPS, followed by the IP address of your server, then colon, the port number is 9392. When you access this page for the first time, you will be presented with a scary looking warning screen telling you that the certificate is not signed. This is normal. Click I understand the risks, scroll down and click on the add exception button. In the pop-up, click on confirm security exception button. Now you are presented with the login screen. You will need to enter the username which is admin by default, and the password that you got from the initial script execution. I already saved the OpenVAS password in a file, so I will copy it and use it in here. Once you sign in, you will be immediately greeted by a quick start wizard, which will allow you to run a default scan against a target computer right away. I know you're tempted at this moment to use this easy wizard, but please don't. Bear with me. I will show you how to set up a scan from scratch. The first thing you should do is to configure a scan target. To do so, go to the configuration menu and select the target's item. Now click on the star icon to add a new target. Enter a name that describe your target, which is the metasploitable host in my case. You can enter a comment here if you want, but that's optional. Next, you need to specify the IP address of the host that you want to scan. Choose the manual option and enter the IP address of your target. If you have multiple machines to scan, it's better to use the from file option to load the set of IP addresses that you want to target. Also, you had the option of excluding hosts from the list. The reverse lookup will slow down the scan, so I will choose no for both of them. I will leave the default options for the port list. I will show you later how to understand the contents of these ports list. We don't need any credentials to use in this session. So I will create a target by clicking on the create target button. Next, we need to create a new task, 
which will perform the scanning job. To do so, click on the Scan Management menu item. Then select Tasks. Click on the star to create a new task. Now give your scan a name. Some optional comment if you want. Select the target that you already configured. You can choose an alert or schedule, but honestly, you probably will not use them in your test. Next, choose the Yes option to add the results to Asset Management and choose the No option for Alterable Task. An important setting in this screen is the Scan Config item. Click on the drop down list and select the full and very deep ultimate. I'm choosing this option to get the maximum results of scan output. Next, click on the Create Task button. Once the task has been created, click on the Play button to start scanning the target. If you want to watch the scan live, up here in the drop-down list, Select Refresh every 30 seconds. While waiting for the scan to finish, I will show you how to change some configuration settings for this application. Now click on the Configurations menu. To customize the list of ports to scan, click on the Port List item. Here, we can see all the pre-installed port scan list. If you're curious, and want to check what's inside, click on the name and it will bring you up here to the list of port ranges that each scan support. Let's say you want to add a new custom port range that fits your needs. Click on the blue star icon to add a new port list. Give it a name and specify the port ranges that you want to be able to scan. Important to note here that the capital T stands for the TCP and the capital U stands for UDP. The dash between the port number means that it's a range. Now let's say I want to scan for TCP ports from one thousand. I will write a capital T for TCP, then 1-1000. The next thing that we need to customize is the credential settings. Click on the star button. Do you remember when we were asked to choose SSH or SMB credentials during the scan configuration? Let's say you want to create an SSH credential. Give it a name, then enter the login name, followed by the password for SSH. Finally, click on the Create Credential. Let's check another configuration setting, the Scan Configs this time. A given Scan Config contains a list of Network Vulnerabilities Test NVT, to be conducted to understand what these scans include. Click on the name. I don't want to waste your time with boring definitions. So let's move on to the next one and to see how to set up an alert. Click on the star button to create a new one again. A typical scenario is to set up an email alert when a scan is complete. Let's give it a name. As always, the comment is optional. I want the event to run when the task is done, condition to always, and set the email options. Finally, click on the Create Alert button. To create a schedule, go to the Configurations menu again and select the Schedules item. Click on the Star button again. Here, you can create a new schedule time to use it to start a new scan. The next thing we need to take a look at is the report formats. In this screen, you can see the list of the reports that the OpenVAS support. 
let's go back to the task window and check the scan progress, which should be done by now. Let's see what's inside. Check out these interesting vulnerabilities. Wait until we start exploiting them using Metasploit in the future modules. One final thing before I end this demo. No vulnerability scanning tool would be really useful without up-to-date vulnerability test suites. OpenVAS project maintains public feeds of network vulnerability tests and VTs. Also, Security Content Automation Protocol, SCAP, and Computer Emergency Readiness Team, CERT Advisory. You can sync up with the latest feeds simply by going to the Administration menu and select the appropriate feed. For example, if you want to update the NVT feed, select it from the list and then click Synchronize with feed now. 